Hey everybody, it's Friday. Time for Facebook Friday. And I could not be more excited about today's projects. I have been holding off on Ride the Rain for this whole time. And finally, I'm like, we've got to use it. We've got to dedicate a whole week really to it. I'm very excited to show you today's projects. All right, let's see, make sure we are in the right place. Hmm, are we in the right place? Oh yes, okay. Ooh, suddenly I didn't see it. All right, how are you guys? Hello, Karen, how are you? Good to see you. Hope you guys have had a great week. This week flew by, ah, why does it go by so fast? It's crazy. We've had a, a bumpy week this week, I'll just say that. <laughs> Oh, you know, you know how it goes. My oldest daughter had her very last tennis tournament of her high school career. Um, it was the district championships and they did pretty well. Um, her and her partner came in third in the district, which they weren't expecting. So it was exciting. Also kind of sad and weird that she's done. I won't ever see her play tennis on a tennis team probably again, which is sad. Oh, it's just, I don't know. It's, you know, it's hard to see your kids getting older and older. It's just very weird. All right. Hey, Dina, good to see you. Good to see you guys. All right. So let's see. I think I'll start by telling you guys about the In Color Club. Here are just some examples of the new In Colors that are coming in the new catalog. Let's see if I can name them. Soft Succulent, Pale Papaya, Fresh Freesia, Polished Pink, look, it's like my nail color, um, Evening Evergreen. I will tell you that I am loving Pale Papaya. It's a very light orange, and like someone suggested last week, if you've been around, Peekaboo Peach. It's very much like Peekaboo Peach, um, and I love it. I'm not an orange person. I would say orange is my least favorite color, but I do really like that one, and of course, the the, the polished pink, I would say, is like a Barbie, Barbie pink. It's a good one. So In Color Club. In Color Club is a five-month commitment. You join, and every month you get a kit from me featuring one color. So like the first month, you might get pale papaya. You're going to get a pack of cardstock, um, a ink pad, an ink refill, the stamp and blends, the stamp and write markers, a bolt of ribbon, the little bags, the embellishments, and what am I missing? Everything, basically everything that is in this color, you're gonna get that month in your kit. Plus a handmade card from me featuring your color and a bonus embellishment. So it's kind of like putting all your in color products on layaway, right? So you're just paying a little bit each month and each month I send you a kit with all the stuff for one color. So by the end, which would be September, you would have everything in the catalog for all five colors. So lots of you've joined before and you know all about it. Um, I announced it this week on my blog. There's a link, you don't have to ask me for the link. I can list this link because you're not paying anything right now. I will send you invoices on uh, May 1st. Michelle, is it full-size cardstock? Yes. You're gonna get the whole pack, 24 sheets of that color every month. Full eight and a half by 11. Good question. Um, the only thing really I split are the embellishments. I get a pack of embellishments and split it by five people. So that month you would get all the pale papayas and someone else would get the polished pinks. Um, you're gonna get, you know, of course, both blends, the marker, the ink pad, the refill, a whole bolt of ribbon, everything that, um, oh, oh, the in color designer series paper too. You'll get the sheets, all the sheets of that in that color. So here's the problem. I have a link on my blog for signups. Something's weird. I, I use um, a website called Constant Contact to take all my registrations and it's glitchy occasionally. But this week, it's been super glitchy. And what happens is you go over and you fill everything out and you click register and it glitches and it takes you right back to the beginning. And so you think you've registered, but
but you haven't. So all of you who have registered, you should have seen a confirmation screen and received a confirmation email from me. Um, if you did not, then that means you didn't get registered. So you need to double check on that. If you're not sure, reach out to me and we'll check. Um, I have received probably 10 emails in the last three days saying that this has happened. Um, I have talked to the company about this glitch and they're kind of like, well, we don't know. So <laughs> who knows? So anyway, if you have signed up for In Color Club already, make sure you have a confirmation. If you haven't, and it'll also tell you, if you go back over there to register and it, you're registered, it'll tell you you're already registered. But if you it didn't go through, it will take your registration. Um, this club signups end the last day of this month. Um, so April 30th at midnight, I'll close the signups. May 1st is when I will send you your first invoice. Um, you'll get an invoice from me May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, August 1st, September 1st. Um, you know, I'm thinking of all the, there's a lot of in-color stuff. You need to read the details on my blog. I left some things off that list. <laughs> there's a lot of in-color stuff. Um, but anyway, and I can't think of the price off the top of my head right now. What is it? 59 plus $8 shipping. I think I use flat rate shipping padded because it's heavy. Paper is so heavy. Um, anyways, if you have questions about that, let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. You can click on um, yet yesterday's post. Actually, if you go back just one post from today on my blog, pinkbugger.com, you will see all the details. All right. Okay. So good. Next thing I want to tell you about is the uh, flowering cactus class. This class is my Alzheimer's research fundraiser class. It has the mini album. It has four cards. It has a 3D box. Um, you get the class kit for free when you order the flowering cactus kit um, from Stampin' Up. So this one doesn't have a registration. Um, you actually go to my Stampin' Up site order the, the flowering cactus kit um, or something with equal value. As long as you use the host code, you'll be counted. Everything with that host code will be counted in the, this class. Um, and then I will send you this for free. If you buy the top level, the full flowering cactus kit, you're also gonna get a bolt of this for free. There's two options for this class. So make sure you hop over and read about it. The deadline for this is Monday, okay? Um, so make sure that if you want to um, get in on the flowering cactus class, that you've done that by Monday. Hey, Terry, you guys can see I've started cutting for it, I've kind of estimated how many I think we're going to have. I may have to add more. I'm not sure. But I started working on that yesterday. So if you want in on this class, make sure that you go read the details and get your order in by Monday. Um, and usually you guys are funny. Um, I have trained you so well when, I, when you register for a class to go over on my registration site, the confirmation email includes the link to the PDF, but this class, because you're not using a registration link, doesn't do that. It's just an online order. So you'll get that PDF the day your class ships for that. Okay. And those of you who want just the PDF, it is available in my PDF store as always. Alrighty, let me put that up. And let's see, Trey, Andrea. No, I'm not making the horseshoe, the one I put um, yesterday on my blog, right? Yesterday, was it yesterday? But I, I will show it. I'm not making that one today. All right, let's see. I'm gonna make three other ones though. Why will Facebook not stop being so glitchy with Facebook Live? Why? I don't know. I'm afraid to like even say it because you know they will ding your video and say, oh, we're taking that down. You weren't saying nice things about us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing is the Dragonfly Garden class. This class features this stamp set and this bundle, or punch, it is a bundle. And it is actually eight cards, eight beautiful cards. A few of the cards also use the A Touch of Ink Celebration stamp set. And I had about 
I don't know, 25 of these and they were going to be free to who needed them and they've already been um, claimed. So you can still register for this class. I just don't have any more of these to, to go around. Uh, but I know a lot of you have this. And on some of the cards that use that, you can substitute the dragonfly or flowers. I think only three cards use that stamp set. But anyhow, that is the last class for April. And the deadline for that is the 26th. Um, I am not going to be doing a class to go in May. So if you need a class to work on in May, make sure you get this one um, because I'm not going to do a class to go in May. We're going to have Club Create, In Color Club, and Facebook Fridays. But I'll be gone for 10 days, fingers crossed, on the in incentive trip with Stampin' Up! for 10 days. So I just couldn't get it done. So um, anyhow, there won't be a class to go for me. I don't think I've not done a class to go in like five years. I've never skipped a month. It's weird, but I just can't. Um, also, there will be product shares too. I have not. It's all my to-do list. Paper shares and ribbon shares. All right. Um, let's see. Um, Dawn is asking, does anyone know why on some Facebook Lives you can share watching the video and others have to share before you start watching the video? I don't know, Donna. That's a good question. I do not know the answer to that. You know, they change things all the time. I thought you were going to ask if the, why the share button wasn't there. But, you know, like I'm watching it on my iPad and I don't have the share button either. I have to actually like close it to be able to share. I don't know. That's weird. All right. Club Create for next month. Club Create is my subscription club. We're going to feature the brand new Pansy Patch. Super cute. We have, we do... Um, Four cards in a 3D. It is $39. That includes shipping. You'll get $20 in product and five projects. And you can add on the bundle um, at catalog cost. I pay the tax and shipping on those. Um, that subscription is open until May 7th. So make sure if you want the pansy patch, you can... Um, I'm reading comments. I lose my train of thought. Um... If you want the Pansy Patch Club Create for May, make sure you're subscribed by May 7th, okay? Um, there's a link on my blog. There's a link at the top of my blog. Um, and there's a link on today's PDF, all right? All right, how about some prizes? And then we are ready. I feel like I forgot to tell you guys something. That's it, I don't know. All right, how about some prizes from last week? Cindy Cop and Janice Van Howling. And Janice, I didn't do very well writing your name. I know it's backwards, but you guys will recognize your names. Please claim your prizes. Let me know where I can mail them. Cindy, I think I might have your mailing address, but go ahead and let me know just in case. It'll be faster that way, so I don't have to go searching for it. Thanks, Elizabeth. So, yeah, you. Um, in order to be entered to win a prize, all you have to do is share on Facebook and I just randomly go through and pick two people each week. Um, this week I'm actually going to give away two sets of two stamp sets, <laughs> if that makes sense. My prize cabinet is overflowing so I got to clear it out a little bit. So the prize for next week is both the Happiest of Birthdays and Borders to Background stamps and I've got two sets of them so I'll pick two winners for these. All right, all you have to do is share the video. All right, my desk is cleared. You guys, make sure that you have hopped over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. There's a PDF that looks just like this. It has all three projects that we're gonna do today. It has um, the measurements that you'll need. It has a product list. If you're wondering like, what did she use? What color was that? It's all on the PDF, it's free. Um, also, I have, I have in red, Put the things that are retiring so you guys know that's probably what I forgot to tell you guys right I mean not that you haven't heard me like beating it to death but <laughs> just in case this is retiring at the end actually May 3rd so not at the end of April May 3rd in it's gone things in here are never coming back um, not everything but if you go on to the website you'll see what's retiring anyhow if it's retiring it's in red on here Okay, um, 
If it's in purple, I have new color coding. If it's in purple, it's a sneak peek from, I can't show you the inside, from this new catalog. This goes live May 4th, okay? So today we've got retiring, we've got um, sneak peeks, we've got both. And then there is the spring catalog, which isn't doing anything right now. It's continuing through the end of June, okay? That's this one. And this is where Ride the Range is from. Um, you can't order on that website. Maria, m email me, please, about that. I'm not sure I'm understanding. Email me, okay? Um, so this catalog, we are, we are working our way through it. Um, this week, we're going to be making three projects with Ride the Range. Now, in conjunction with my Facebook Fridays, I always offer the make and takes for free. If you would like these three projects that we make today free, then all you have to do is put in an order, minimum $35 by Monday at midnight, using this host code, and you'll see it down here when I flip the camera. It's also on my blog. And on Tuesday, I will cut them and pack them. This is what they look like. And they come to you in the mail for free. You know what happened this week? <laughs> my um, mail lady called me. We, I have her number. She has my number because she's like my partner in business. <laughs> she helps me a lot. She called me yesterday. She said, Erica, one of the packages you sent has no label on it. I'm going to put it in your mailbox tomorrow. <laughs> So hopefully that was an over, like hopefully I didn't miss somebody and I don't know how to figure it out because I guess I could go back and see which labels I printed. I'll do that. But it was just funny. I thought, well, oopsies, someone's not going to get the projects, but I think it was an extra. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's turn it around. You guys close your eyes. So if you want the make and takes. So make sure your order is in by Monday at midnight. Next week for Facebook Friday, we are going to be doing Facebook Thursday again because here in San Antonio, the kids have Friday off. It's um, what we call Fiesta Friday, Fiesta Holiday. Um, we have a 10-day Oh, like a 10-day party basically every year in April and the kids get the Friday off. There's parades every night downtown. It's a big deal. Of course, because of COVID, we're not having it, but the school calendar is already set. So they have Friday off. So next Facebook Friday will be Facebook Thursday, two o'clock. Let me get, I'm looking for tape. Um, all right, who stole my tape? You know, I have to hide things. I have to hide things or these kids will take it. All right, I'm gonna use painter's tape. <laughs> okay, anyway, what I was saying is Facebook Friday next week will be Facebook Thursday. It'll be at two o'clock and we're gonna do the Flamingo. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> the Flamingo in the spring catalog. And I already have the projects I found. I don't know if you guys have, I found a very, very special candy to go with the flamingo. So I can't wait to show you. So make sure that you change your reminders for Thursday next week, okay? <laughs> Nina, it's funny you should say that. Pepper took it. She once again destroyed twine this week. So here's the deal. The room next to me is our kind of like our sitting room. It's a little TV room and it is now, over, my business is now overflowing into that room and I have boxes in there. And I guess she's getting them out of those boxes. I try to make sure they're closed and I guess, I don't know, but she once again um, found twine, unraveled it. It was a giant mess. It took me like an hour and, and I <laughs> unraveled it and put it on a big um, spool. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I was like, okay, I'm not gonna throw away another thing of twine, you little turkey. Pepper's my dog, in case you guys don't know. All right, let's get started. So here is Ride the Range. If you don't know, I am from South Texas. My blog is called Pink Buckaroo. So you know, as soon as I saw this set, I was like, oh my gosh. And so many of you have suggested that this would be the theme of my million dollar stamp set. But I can tell you it is not. It's not. Um, but this one is fun. And, you know, I've told you guys this before. When I get 
really excited about a stamp set or bundle. I almost have a hard time using it because I'm afraid I'm not going to do it justice. So this has been kind of the deal with this one. I keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because I was so worried I wasn't going to be able to do it justice and do things as awesome as I was hoping that they were going to be. But I'm really happy with what I came up with. So I think you guys will like them too. So Let's get started. Donna says, my dog found a dum-dum, ate it, wrapper and all. Yeah, you know, Donna, <laughs> these dogs, I tell you, that is funny. My mom told me her dog, her corgi, ate something the other day. I can't remember what it was. I don't think, I don't know if she's on here, but it was something. She ate all of it. <laughs> and it was something. Who knows? Okay, here is our first card. We're going to start with this. My initial thoughts were Western, right? Let's make a, a traditional Western card. And when I think of Western, I think of bandanas. And I went back into my blog many, many, many years ago when I was an artisan design team member. I had done a project that was bandana print. I had used a flower set. I went back to look at it and it was something like, mm, I didn't think we had anything like it. So I started looking through my stamps and I saw that today's tiles. And now this has more of like, a, oh, what do you call it? Um, Middle Eastern feel. What do they call that? You know, like, um, oh, I can't think of the name. Anyway, I can't think of the name. Anyway, I thought, you know what? What if we made it look like bandana? And look, it pretty much looks like a bandana, doesn't it? Uh-huh. I, you know, you just never know if you can take your, you know, if you can kind of back up in your mind and think of things differently, sometimes it works out. All right. So let's start with that. I've told you guys too, I have a hard time breaking out from what is in the catalog. So if I, if they are using a stamp set with paper that coordinates, I have a very hard time using different colors. <laughs> I'm like stuck with what I see in the catalog. So sometimes I have to really like challenge myself to, and, and I, and I Googled something. I Googled, oh, I think I Googled, um, cowboy birthday party favors and horseshoe decorations. And I didn't really find a whole lot, but a lot of bandanas. So I was like, okay, we're going to go with a bandana for sure. Okay. So what, uh, what I found with this stamp set, you definitely definitely need your stamparatus. And it's two-step. You have the little dots and then you have the tiles. And what I found is that I had a better chance of lining them up if I used this one first. Okay, so let me lay it down on my, I have half a sheet of basic white. I'm going to pick it up and... I'm gonna then look and see if it's lined up pretty good. There are grid, there's a grid on here. And I'm gonna make sure that I have it lined up on that grid pretty straight. And it looks pretty good, okay? So I'm gonna stamp it across three times. This, this stamp set was designed to do the hinge step, which is what they are calling this technique. You'll see in just a second. So I'm gonna ink it up with Memento Black. Have any of you used this boho, Donna? Yeah, no, I'm thinking of like, like Turkish, you know, like um, in Di at Disney World, they have a little section that <laughs> has this kind of tile. That's what I was thinking. Not that I have been to Turkey, but I don't know, that's, I can't think of the name. Anyhow, have any of you used this stamp set? I love it. I. I have not used it at all. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hop over two spots, all right? And then when we lay it down, it's gonna be exactly next to the other ones. So ink that up. These first two projects make my hands really messy. So it's gonna be interesting to see what my hands look like by the time we get to the last project. I did clean recordings yesterday and I did the messiest one first, and then my hands were disgusting for the next two videos. So the clean recordings are on YouTube. They're linked under the projects too, in case you wanna come back and, and rewatch a project. 
without all the Facebook chatter. Okay, so there. Now, let me get my chamois. Moroccan, Elizabeth, that's it, Moroccan. Yes, Moroccan tile. That's exactly it. I could not think of the word, thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna get this tile, these tiles, and we're gonna line them up. And you really have to get your head in there, you know, and uh, stand right over it. There's lots of little points where you can line them up and just kind of check them all, wiggle your stamp around. One thing that you will know if you've used the Stamparatus is that the photopolymer stamps are real sticky before you ink them. So make sure your magnets are holding your paper really well uh, that first time because when you pull that up, sometimes it moves the paper. All right, real red. So fun. And then hop over two spots. Whoa, hello. Gotta move the magnet. And I will tell you that I probably shouldn't admit this, but mine are never totally perfect. <laughs> They're not totally perfect. So if you do yours and yours is just slightly off, see how this wiggles a little bit? I feel like maybe that's why. But it looks good enough for me, I think. I'm like, eh, it's all right, it's good. And you can play around with it. And maybe if you're more patient than I am, yours will be more perfect. But I think that's pretty good. Plus it's the background of a card. So I'm not gonna stress over it too much, right? The perfectionist in us sometimes has to just take a break and deal with it. At least that's what I tell myself. Okay, now let's cut it down. Let me get my trimmer and put this away. Hi, Vicki. Uh, Donna, yes. You know, if you guys have, if are any of you into the Enneagram numbers that describe different personalities, I'm definitely a one, which is a perfectionist. But... I'm a I'm kind of a messy perfectionist. I'm I'm in a hurry perfectionist, you know? So I don't know. Yeah, I just sometimes it for me it's like situations have to be perfect, not necessarily I don't know. I don't know. I wish cleaning perfection <laughs> was in me because I don't wanna clean and I don't care enough. But but messes stress me out, so I don't know. Okay, we're gonna cut this down to four by five and a fourth, right here. And it's gonna cut some of those tiles off, that's okay. It's the background, it doesn't have to be perfect. Good, I'm glad you guys think it looks good enough for you guys. Okay, now, and again, if you have this, play with it. Maybe try it the opposite way than what I did. Try the tiles first. Um, you know, play around with it and see. All right, I'm gonna adhere this to a basic black mat. Okay. And then we're going to put this on a real red card base, flat, like that. All right. Now, I have some sneaky peeks for you guys. Two sets of dies that are gonna be in the new catalog. This one is called, let me see if I can remember, scallop contour scallop, scallop contour dies, stitched um, scalloped rectangles. Some of them aren't stitched, some of them have dots, some of them have little holes. They're really cute. So this little shape is from here. It's this one right here. And then this little tag is from the tailored Tags dies, I believe is what they're called, and it's the smallest one. I love a good tag. You know, you can use tags for all kinds of things. All right, let's add some stamping. Where is my grid paper? Actually, I don't think I need grid paper quite yet. I am gonna need it in a little while. All right, we're gonna stamp the barbed wire 
Hey, Jaton. Jaton Fisher, what are you doing? Thank you, Jaton. Jaton and I go way back teaching. Her daughter was in my kindergarten class, and her daughter is now graduating from Texas A&M. And isn't that funny? It's funny how kids get older, but yet you feel like you don't get older. You're like, I'm the same as I was 15 years ago. I guess I'm not. Okay, so I did the barbed wire in Smoky Slate. I'm going to stamp the birthday. Happy birthday. In real red on that tag. And then I've got Smoky Slate again. And, oh, you're going to go see Brittany Jaton. Good for you. Be careful. The weather's awful today. All right, now I'm going to stamp the horseshoe in Smoky Slate on Smoky Slate cardstock. And we're going to, the only thing we need to die cut is the horseshoe. I cut out a star using our Stitch Stars dies. Um, this is Misty Moonlight Designer Series paper. Do you recognize it from the DSP pack? I thought that looked like denim. And that look like blue jeans. All right, so let's bring over the cut and emboss machine. And <laughs> thank you, Brittany. I don't feel that old. I know, but when your daughter is graduating high school, it sure does make you feel old. All right, there's that. We'll line that up. And all right let's move this guy back out of the way put the die back erica and let's put our card together all right we have our of course now we're going to bring in the dimensionals we have our scalloped basic white scalloped rectangle and i'm going to do this at an angle i gave the dogs you guys know what a kong toy is you stuff it with stuff and then you put you, stuff, I put dog food in there, and then you put either yogurt or peanut butter on the ends, and then you freeze it, and it keeps them busy for a long time. So I planned ahead and got that, and they're, they're just over there being so quiet. <laughs> I wonder if it'll last the whole hour. We'll see. Okay, so now mini dimensionals on our horseshoe. I didn't get Kongs for a while. I didn't understand them. And then I watched a video because I saw that you can get spray cheese that's Kong, the the dog brand. I was like, what? So then I read a, I watched a video and then my mom told me she was freezing hers and putting them in the Giving them to the giving them to her dog when she leaves so that she's kept busy while she's gone. And I was like, okay, now I get it. All right, I'm moving things around because this isn't up high enough. I need it to go a little bit higher. And then that goes there. Now, last but not least, we're gonna grab Pepper's twine. Where did I put it? Right here. Pepper's my dog loves twine. And I'm going to fold this piece in half and tie a double bow. Did you guys see that? You fold it in half and you just treat it like one piece. And you tie your bow and then it's a double bow. All right. And last but not least, I'm not going to, I am not going to tie it in that hole. You know, I don't have time for that kind of nonsense. We're just going to put it on there with a glue dot. So it looks like it's tied. Oh wait, there's one more. We've got to do some rhinestones because no true cowgirl goes without her rhinestones, right? Okay, there we go. Now we're done, isn't it fun? This would be a great boy birthday card. Change the bandana to pink and then you've got a girl birthday card. Um, this one I did in the opposite colors, so Misty Moonlight, and everything else is the same except the star is from the Real Red Designer Series paper. Really fun, right? And not hard at all. Not hard. I should have made another blue one so it would be even. Okay. 
All right, good. I'm glad you guys like that project. I was so excited when I made that one. All right, let me get all of our stuff that we need over here. And this and this and scissors and all the things. Okay, the next one is going to be messy. And, oh, you know what I meant to say? I told you guys last week that these were on uh, back order. And remember I told you the number, like there wasn't a whole lot coming in. And I was worried that they were going to go on unorderable, which happens. Well, it happened. They went on unorderable this week. And I was like, oh, great. Because that's what I'm using on Facebook Friday. But then I noticed they're off unorderable. Now they're back ordered. So you can order it. You just have to wait for it to come in May. Okay. So little tidbit there. They are on back order. I know. But I had to, I had to get this done before the new catalog comes out because I, I knew what I know once the new catalog gets here, that'll be the focus. Um, oh, okay. So that was leading me to tell you that we're using blending brushes which are unorderable. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are unorderable, but they'll be back. And I want to give you a little warning. I put mine in my drawer like this because, you know, I'm in a hurry and I'm messy and I don't care. Well, if, you're, if your blending brushes touch each other, this is what's going to happen, okay? So learn from me and don't do that. Um, Stamp and Storage makes a great blending brush holder. Um, how about the rest of you? How are you storing your blending brushes? Because I can't just keep throwing them in the drawer. I've got to do something, whoops, I got to do something better than that, um, obviously, because now I've got red on my yellow. So if you have blending brushes and you have a great tip, please let us know. Okay, so we're going to make this sunset. I knew I wanted to do a sunset with the um, windmill as a silhouette. And so this is what I came up with, and I love how it looks on a purple background. It's kind of unexpected, you wouldn't think, um, but it just popped right off that um, gorgeous, great background. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. The rounded shape is, comes with this die, it's right here. And I'm gonna show you another card when we're done using this. You definitely are gonna need grid paper for this or whatever you use. Um, you have yours in a cup next to your ink pads, Carla. Do they touch each other? I was thinking I probably should get a little Ziploc bag for each one. <laughs> but let's be honest. Am I going to put it back in its individual Ziploc bag each time? Probably not. So I got to find something that's, I probably should order the one from Stampin' Storage. Okay. This takes a while. And I probably am just going to... I'm not gonna do it as long as I did on the first one for the sake of the video. But this definitely takes a while. And I meant to re-ink my Davidil Delight. You know what, I think I'll just stop and do that. Let's see if I have enough Daffodil Delight. Whoa, I have Pineapple Punch re-inker. That's old. That is very old. Okay, hold on. Make sure my spoon is clean. I keep a spoon with my re-inking. And it was obviously gorgeous grape that I re-inked last time. You can also use your bone folder, <laughs> as I've done in the past. Um, so we're gonna start with Daffodil Delight. And, you know, I don't know what the official way to re-ink your ink pads are, but this is how I do it. I just take that spoon and just rub it in. Sometimes I get too much and then I have to kind of stamp it on a paper towel, but most of the time it's just about right. All right. Now, back to the blending brushes. Um, you don't, you never know. Let's see, is this going to run red? It is a little bit. Look at that. Darn it. Um, you never know how much ink is going to be on your blending brush. So I always, you want to start kind of over here. Um, because if you take your blending brush and set it down on your paper and then do this, 
see how it leaves like a hard mark? And I will be honest with you, as I'm doing this, I forget, and sometimes I do set it down on my, my white, but go slow and think about what you're doing. Um, oh, who said that? Ruth, that's a great idea. A makeup brush holder and they don't kiss. Huh. And Carla says, I do wipe them off after I use them on a microfiber cloth. Yes, I heard that. Microfiber cloth is good for cleaning. Yep. Okay, good suggestions. Okay, so you want to start over here like this. And I'm going to go in an arc. And I'm going to leave some white down here at the bottom. I never really know when to stop when I'm doing this. I just want to keep going and going and going. And the more I go, then the more I need to add something else. So <laughs> you just play with it and, you know, stop when you think you are there. And I will tell you that the colors sometimes I feel like are streaky but then after it sits there for a few minutes and dries, those streaky, you know, streaks, they go away. So just, just what I've learned. All right, so that was Daffodil Delight. Now we're gonna do Mango Melody, which I love, but this one tends to leave hard marks. So I'm gonna try my best to not do that. My Mango Melody ink pad is very juicy. Very, very juicy. All right. This also is a really good arm workout. See how I'm already getting a hard edge over there. But that's okay. We're, ah, I did it. I got a hard edge. That's okay. We're going to work it out. The more you do this, the more you put ink on it, the more it's going to smooth out. All right, next. How about some Melon Mambo? We're also, I also started with a larger color than we need. I have um, a quarter sheet of cardstock and we're gonna cut it down with that die. So now as I go darker, I'm kind of going back with the lighter colors and adding more. I'm gonna go back to daffodil now. Add some down here. So Carla, with a microfiber, is it dry or wet? You get it wet. I need to I need to get a designated microfiber cloth for these. Usually they're pretty dry. The next time I need to use them, they're pretty dry. That's the first time I've seen some transfer. My arm is already sore. And I, <laughs> do you guys feel like you're going to snap it in half? I like squeeze it so hard that I worry that I'm going to break it. Haven't yet, but they're new. So these are unorderable, but they'll be back. They were unorderable for a while. They came back in stock and everybody wanted them again. And they went unorderable again because we depleted all the, <laughs> the supply. They're very popular because they're new. They're great quality. So I'm taking my Daffodil Delight and kind of working it up. Um, do the other colors transfer from the microfiber cloth when cleaning different brushes? Um, that's a good question, Christina. Carla says, I haven't tried it wet, but maybe should do both of those Norwex cloths for windows. Yeah, those are good. Those are kind of, exp that's true. They are kind of expensive, but you know what? I have a couple and I don't ever use them. I don't like the way microfiber feels. It feels weird on my hands. <laughs> I don't know why. So maybe I, that's what I need to do is put it in here specifically for, ah, that was a little too much, Erica. See, I just never know like when to stop because I just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding. Okay, now I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna get Gorgeous Grape. Gorgeous Grape 
is the darkest of all the colors, so be careful. And we don't want a whole lot. We just want it up here towards the top like this. And after we cut it out, I like to go back and just add a little more up at the top. Oh, my hands are tired. Ooh, look at that hard spot I left. Okay, one more pass through with all the colors and then we're gonna stop. Oh goodness, what is happening there, God? Come on. We have a little cloud down there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say it's a cloud. But honestly, it does when it dries, everything just kind of blends together. As you can see on here, see how it just kind of all goes together? And then this one too, this was the first one I made. They're different every time. What color is this? Mango. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more and then I'm gonna stop because we gotta move on. I can't be here all day. I feel like we need a little more <laughs> grape. Okay, and then I'm gonna stop. Okay, so it looks kind of ugly right now, but we're gonna cut it out and it's gonna look good, I promise. Let me close all the inks. So the colors I used were Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, oh, Mango Melody, and Daffodil Delight. Um, Kat, Kathy says, I just use the same microfiber cloth and rub brushes until no color comes off. When finished, I wash cloth and start all over again. Excellent advice. Thank you. This is what I do. I go like this. Okay. <laughs> and then I put it away. I know that's bad. But if it's designated for just one color, I don't know. But you guys know. That's me. All right, so we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes. We're gonna do some other things before we bring the cut and emboss machine. My hands are gross now, look. We are going to, we're gonna emboss that bat, those back strips with a Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. And that is four by five. And then we are going to, we're gonna cut out, where did the dies go? We're gonna cut out a piece of black like this. This is kind of like the land dye, you know, the ground dye. Um, for the windmill, I'm gonna add some adhesive sheet, um, an adhesive sheet piece to the back because the windmill is, you know, it's kind of thin and narrow and I will make a mess of the liquid glue. So if you put adhesive sheet on the back, then it turns it into a sticker. Okay, like that. Um, and then we're gonna do some embossing here. We're gonna emboss the sentiment. And I'm gonna use my embossing buddy. I'm sorry, I apologize. We don't have these anymore, but I can't emboss without it. A baby sock with cornstarch is what I've been told. It's the same thing. All right. And I love this little westerny saying life is a journey enjoy the ride okay this is a craft ink pad it comes uninked and you it comes uninked with the reinker you ink it white embossing powder this little container is from tj maxx i always get questions about this just, it's just Tupperware, you know, like a, not actual Tupperware, but you know, I like a lunch container. All right. While I'm doing this, let's see what questions I missed. Kathy says dry, never wet. So keep your micro cloth, micro fiber cloth dry. That's what Carla said too. Um, Kathy says she forgets to use the adhesive sheets all the time. I know the adhesive sheets are amazing and I've gotten much better at using them now because I love them so much. I make sure, I always am thinking, ooh, how am I gonna glue that on? And then I think, ooh, I'm gonna use an adhesive sheet so I don't have to glue it on. All right, so we've got that. Make sure it's all shiny, yep. Now, 
Let's bring it all over and do some cutting. Let's do these two first. And, oh, come on. I can see that this has some little doodads left in it. So let me, I'm gonna make the hill going up on the left. Can you guys see? Um, our take your pick tool has a little brush attachment that you can use to get all those little things out. Okay. And let's cut that out. And you know, I didn't measure these pieces. I didn't write that down. It's probably an inch and a half wide and it's a little bit white or I mean tall and then it's a little bit wider than the um the window you'll see that in just a second okay there's that there's that now the mini message no it's just called messages look that is going to be one that's easy to lose I got to make sure I put that back the messages die I have not been using this um I don't know why <laughs> because it is really good. It has some great label shapes here. Um, I think I'm a little bit um, put off that they're all connected. I think I would probably rather have them individual, but the stamp that it coordinates with this, and there's a second stamp in the new catalog, it is a big stamp, you stamp it, and then this lays down on all the, the words. So that is really, a, you know, really kind of a cool concept. But if you're not using that, you have to do it like this. And for cutting, like for me, for classes, I'm not sure how I would do that with a whole bunch. I mean, it would be a little bit more complicated. But on the plus side, you're definitely not gonna lose that that guy, right? And the, the little windows are small, so I would, I would be pretty likely to lose the little ones. <laughs> you guys know me. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and then before we move this, we're gonna emboss with the Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. Denise, you're the lucky girl this week that Facebook is telling me is watching. It says, Denise is watching, Denise is watching, Denise is watching, like a hundred times. Like that's what my comments over here are filled with. I don't know why they will not fix that glitch. All right, I'm missing my gray, here it is, plate number four. Take off all the plates, just the base, and run it through with your plate number four. You guys, when you're watching, do you see that over and over again, so-and-so is watching? Or is it just, well, no, I, I'm not watching as myself. Do you guys see that? I mean, I see it on my, like not just my phone that's recording. It's so funny, Denise. <laughs> I wish you could see it, it's funny. It's annoying, but it's funny. No, Terry, you don't see it? Hmm, it's weird. I know other people who are doing Facebook Lives have said that they're having, oh, they're having that problem too. We forgot. We forgot the main event. The star of the show, our sunset sky. So I'm gonna kind of adjust it. That's, I want that little part to be covered. I don't like that. So, but I wanted to leave that, hmm. Okay, we're gonna do that. I wanted the white to be, you know, cause it is lighter than the yellow. We'll just pretend it's a cloud. You guys don't see it. Well, good, I'm glad you don't see that. Yeah, you heard other demonstrators say that. Yeah, it's super weird, I don't know. And it's been going on for like two months now. <laughs> Judy, you're also watching, good. Cause it didn't tell me you were watching. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird, weird, weird glitch. Okay, I'm gonna bring back this right here and I'm gonna add a little bit more. Where did I put my inks? Right here. Just a little bit. Nope, nope, that's not the one. Uh, on, the, on the top. So I want it to be really dark on the top. It's so gross here today. It was so beautiful last weekend. And I kept telling my husband, we have to get out of this house. We have to go do something. It's so pretty. And we talked about going to the lake and then we're like, ah, okay, we'll go next weekend. Well, tomorrow it's supposed to be like high of 60 and rainy. 
Darn it. Why does that happen? Today it's like that wet, warm, muggy, you know, like, ugh, gross. All right, now we're gonna cut this down to, there it is. We're gonna cut this down to seven eighths of an inch. You saw the count of people watching to go to 200 when Denise's comment, <laughs> Denise is bringing them in. Okay, we're gonna cut these down to five different strips that are seven eighths of an inch, okay? My original card, I was doing one inch strips and when I got to the last one, I didn't have enough room. Oh, I just did that crooked. So, I realized they needed to be a little bit smaller. So, now that's crooked. So, seven eighths of an inch fits pretty good. All right, one more. You're gonna have a little bit left over. And the reason is because I was just too lazy to figure out what five times seven eighths is. I could probably do it in my head. I just, I've been dealing with taxes all week, you guys, and I can barely think of anything. <laughs> so I just didn't do it. So we'll just do, you know, a piece of five, a uh, five by four inch piece, a little bit left over. All right, I'm gonna start in the middle. All right, right here. And then I'm gonna move up to the top. That way I am not gonna get, you know, like if you work from the bottom up and then you get to the top and you have too big of a space, you have to redo all of them. So if you start at the middle and then do the top and the bottom, then you're pretty good. You, you, you know, you have like um, enough wiggle room. Um, I like to get my ruler and get it straight so that I can get this edge straight over here as well, like that. Eight and a half inches of snow, Jody. Ooh, are you in Colorado? I heard Colorado got snow. I mean, I'm sure other places got snow too, but I just heard that today. I know, snow is fun until the spring and then you're like, oh, bring on the warm weather. All right, now we will just do the two in the middle. I feel like that middle one may need to be moved up just a bit. Let's see, yep, I think so. So when you put these on here, the dimensional is gonna grab onto it, but if you don't, you know, if you just let it sit there, you can pull it up pretty easily. Okay, let's do this one, and then we will adjust that middle one. There we go. We're almost there. Almost there. Right there in the middle. All right. And then you can take your straight edge. Yeah, pretty good. Close enough. All right, three more dimensionals. Thunderstorms with hail most of the week here in Louisiana. Karen, oh, we're approaching hurricane season. I know, I worry about you guys over in Louisiana. Um, I miss thunderstorms here in South Texas. It's either feast or famine. You know, we're either like flooding. Oh, and I meant to put this on first. We're either flooding or we're in a drought and unfortunately right now we are in drought and we haven't had any rain in a while well I mean real rain like today it's just that misty stuff what I did there I made a mistake I put this down before I put that on and it was too long and I needed to trim it up the edge so if you do this put that on your sunset first before you adhere it that was an oops on my part um, did somebody ask about embossing powder? Do the top and bottom strips, then the middle, then the other two will work. Do the top and bottom. Yeah, Vicki, you could do that. You definitely could do that. Okay, usually I just kind of wing it and move them around as I go. 
<laughs> I'm always in a hurry. Always in a hurry. All right, let's get the doodads out. And it's a sticker now. I've peeled off that adhesive backing. And we're gonna put that right there. And last but not least, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Wouldn't this make a great um, retirement card? Or like a college graduation maybe? Let's see, do I want it there? There we go. Done. Done. I love this card. And each one looks different depending on how I, <laughs> how I did my blending. Hmm. I don't know. They're all very different. I hope you guys like this card. I thought it was a little weird, but a good weird, maybe, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Purple on a cowboy card, yeah. And you could change the colors too. I thought about, um, you could do a black background, you could do a white background, you could do a mango melody background, which I love mango, but I really like the way it popped off with that purple. All right, good, I'm glad you guys liked it. Let's do our last project. It is a 3D project, and I think you're gonna laugh when you see what's inside my 3D project. Okay, so like I said, I Googled and Amazoned and Pinterest cowboy birthday party favors, and I came up with nothing. I mean, literally nothing. Um, so I was searching all kinds of like cowboy candy, cowboy, I mean, there's nothing. So then I just happened to stumble on this. I think this came up on Amazon when I searched. These are, you ready? Shredded beef jerky. Okay. Now if you're, if you're around cowboys or just dudes in, in particular, you might know what this looks like, right? Belongs in a back pocket. <laughs> Here in Texas, you see that a lot. But this is just beef jerky. It is nothing else. It is no tobacco, nothing, just beef jerky. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was cute. Um, and uh, I was actually reading the reviews on Amazon and somebody said it's great for people with bad teeth. <laughs> because you don't have to chew it a whole lot like you do with beef jerky, you know, beef jerky is super tough. So I thought, okay, that's pretty cool too. It's easy to chew. But anyhow, I thought it was funny. Have you guys seen those before? I have never seen them. So I found them on Amazon. If you want them, the link is on my blog. I, I almost worried that that was a little too, I don't know, like people were like, what is she doing? That's death, but it's not, it's not, it's just beef jerky, I promise. Okay. <laughs> I need to make some cowboy candy, come on. Why aren't there cowboy candy? You know what, I could have used those praline, I just thought of that, what are those pralines that we have here? That, that would probably be cute, I don't know. Look at my hands, you guys, it's a mess. I need a sink in my office. All right, you're gonna need Let's look on page two. Thanks, Judy. Is it, Carla? Yeah, the brand. Uh, my husband and my daughters love beef jerky. I am not a fan. But that I thought was funny. Um, oh, Robin, it came out when your kids were in middle school and they loved it. Yeah. I almost worried, like, is that kind of like candy cigarettes? Like, is that bad? Uh, I don't think so. Because, you know, whatever. Anyhow, I don't know but I'm gonna hand them over to my kids when they get home. Okay, you're gonna need a piece of cherry cobbler <clears throat> that is eight by four and three fourths. Score the long side at half, at three and a fourth, four and a fourth, and seven. Turn it and score at one and three and three fourths. Remember these measurements are over on the PDF, the free PDF over there under the last photo on my blog post today. Okay, you know, that would be a cute, just a, I don't know, a, a party favor for a, a little boy's party or, I don't know, big boys, I don't know. Kind of a dude thing. It's hard to come up with dude gifts, dude ideas. Uh, maybe a teacher gift. <laughs> it says, thanks, that's mighty kind of you. If you have a man teacher in your life, 
I don't know. Okay, so that first score line we did is that is just a half inch. So we're gonna cut out those corners right there. And when I do that, I'm also cutting this at an angle. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with all the square tabs, cutting them, cutting the corners off. Okay, and do this one. Leave the middle section straight because those are your side, the sides of your boxes and you need to be able to line up um, these with the edges. All right, so now we're gonna flip it, do this side. And one more. Yesterday, I got ahead of the game because I'm gonna be gone in May, so I'm really working through my to-do list. Um, I got May's All-Star Tutorial Project done as well as June's. I got really far ahead, so they're very cute. I have to say, did you know that there are strawberry ice cream flavored Hershey Kisses? That's all I'm gonna say. There are. And, okay, I'm talking. Right here, these two right here, we need to cut these in half because they need to match this. Those strawberry ice cream Hershey Kisses are at Target. I think you can get them anywhere, but I saw them at Target. I bought them for the kids' Easter eggs, and they all hated them. They hated them. I can't stop eating them. I have to get them out of here. Um, my kids said they're too sweet. And I was like, um, what? <laughs> I never met something that's too sweet. I don't know. I don't know. But they're good. I like them. And I'm not a huge strawberry person. Okay, so there. That'll come later. That'll be next month. You'll see those. Um, that's what your piece looks like. If you need to pause the video um, when you watch it in replay... Um, you can do that to, to cut your piece. Now, we're just gonna put some Tombow on all four of these. There was also birthday cake flavored Hershey Kisses, which I did not buy, which I am sure are delicious. Okay, so I'm folding these in and pressing them behind the sides, making sure that those edges right here are matching up okay a Hershey kiss is dangerous for me because it feels like you know oh it's just a Hershey kiss you know just just a little tiny well and then that turns into two Hershey kisses and then three Hershey kisses right so you see what I'm you see what I'm saying like I can't just have one so it's they're dangerous because in my mind I'm thinking oh it's nothing all right, I've put my little clothes pins there. We're gonna let that dry. And let's get the rest of the pieces. I decided, I was laying in bed late at night thinking random things, and this paper popped into my head. This is the, oh, what do they call it? Natural Touch, it has a weird name. Um, Natural Touch Specialty Paper. It came out just like last month with the butterflies, and it's real thin, and it looks like wood. Um, you've probably seen everybody using it with their butterflies, but I thought this that's perfect to go with this cowboy set. It's only available online. It's not in any catalogs. So we're going to do that, and I cut it out with the stitched shape dies, the square, which are retiring. Can't believe it. Okay, now we're going to stamp the cowboy in memento. White chocolate with actual sprinkles in them, Carla, don't tell me. And the thing is, is that the, the bags of those, the strawberry um, ice cream and the birthday cake kisses are big bags. They're not even the regular size bag. They're like the, you know, the big kind where it like stands up. So you can't just buy a little small, you know, something to try it. You have to really commit. <sighs> okay. Cinnamon cider is what I'm doing. Light cinnamon cider for this little horse. And he's very little, so I'm not gonna worry about any shading. I'm just gonna go in here, and when I get down to those really skinny places, I just kind of dot, dot, dot my marker to fill that color in. And I'm gonna go around all of this, color his face. 
Then I'm going to get the dark. Reese's Pieces, but yeah, Karen, tell me about it. Reese's Pieces, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are like my whole family loves those. And my youngest is obsessed. Oh, I forgot his ears. Well, he's going to have dark cinnamon cider ears. Um, those are so good. And I agree. I, I don't even, I can't even buy those. Cannot even buy those. The ones they have um, now, they have some that have Reese's Pieces inside them. My gosh. I love Reese's Pieces too. Okay, so I did the hair and the reins, and I'll do a little stirrup in dark cinnamon cider. And then we'll do blue jeans. I've got dark balmy blue. Oh, I'm I'm late. You know, I don't even try to fit this in an hour anymore. It's always an hour and 15 minutes now. <sighs> now that I don't have to pick my elementary school kids up, I don't have to worry. Because I used to have to be done by three so that I could go pick up my kids. But now they're all in middle school or high school, so I don't have to worry about it. All right, crumb cake for the saddle and the hat. And then I have the light cherry cobbler for his shirt. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm gonna use um, light petal pink for his face. Use whatever skin tone you want. And these are little, so small, you just wanna like dot, dot, dot. And you know what I realized I didn't do last time is I left this all white. So I'm going to take some crumb cake and just add a ground line. All right. So we're going to cut him out. He's got a matching die. Hi, Marsha. Let me get that. And then we're going to use that messages die again. And I'm going to stamp. I think I stamped it in cherry cobbler the first time and then cinnamon cider the second time. So whatever, I think I like cherry cobbler best. It's a little bit darker. All right. So many things all over the place. Let's bring, oh, I can't stand all the trash. Let me get all that out of the way. Let's bring over the cut and emboss machine. And once again, we're gonna use, I think it's maybe my favorite shape in here, this one. And I feel like we've used this before for Facebook Friday. I was thinking that the other day, but I know I haven't cut a whole bunch of them. I don't know what I used it for. I just kind of just kind of really started using this die and I've had it since the beginning. I don't know why. All right, so this one cuts out like a little banner. All right, and then we'll cut our cowboy out. Thanks for the share, Pam, I appreciate it. And run him through carefully. Snickers ice cream bars, Karen, oh, you're killing me. Those are my dad's favorite. And yes, I agree. So good, so, so good. I could eat a ton of those. All right, let's bring back that barbed wire stamp, which was right here and we need that smoky slate ink pad again and i'm going to grab our crazy psychedelic looking grid paper and i'm just going to stamp this barbed wire up and down this heart now when you get up here to the top it doesn't go all the way across so you kind of want to split it like that that way it's completely covered. Okay, smoky slate ink, smoky slate cardstock. And now I think we are ready to assemble. We're also gonna use one of these, which is the In Good Taste Wood Elements. You have to be very, very, very careful punching them out because they will break. Um, and my dog's favorite, the twine, the linen thread. All right, I believe we have given this plenty of time to dry. And we're gonna put that in there and close that up. This little um, wood piece is gonna fit perfectly in there, but we need some dimensionals. Couple of dimensionals. Thanks, Cindy. Like that. And then we will, oh no, we got to make a little, like a little lasso, right? Look, 
Look what she did. She made it a mess. It's got a knot in it. All right, I'm going to wrap it around my fingers like three times. Okay. And I'm just going to lay it down like that. And I'm going to put a dimensional on top there and a dimensional on top there. And put our cowboy right there. Let's get our little branch. Hello, Charlie. I don't know why he's in here. And tuck that in behind him. And last but not least, um, Marsha, it's cherry cobbler. Did you see what was inside of it? Did you see the, the uh, shredded beef jerky? I went with the colors that were on that. I guess it's more real red, but I went with cherry cobbler. Felt more masculine. All right, and that goes there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of Tombow on the top of my box. And put that right there. And there you have it. Those would make great little party favors, I'm telling you. So cute and not real difficult. What do you guys think? Kind of a weird, a, a weird gift, yeah? But I don't know, maybe not. It's just beef jerky. <laughs> okay, now before I say goodbye to you, I'm gonna show you a couple of other things. Um, I did make a bunch of cards and um, this one uses everything in the more traditional way. If you look in the catalog, if you look online, you'll see a lot of cards that look like this. I um, use that um, window die to do this. This is the, oh, somebody tell me, what's that paper? The paper in the annual catalog that has the wood grain on it. Tasteful touches, tasteful something. Anyway, so I cut the window and then I just took my scissors and followed it along and just made it um, like a real window, the, the negative space. Then on the inside, I took what I cut out and put it there with a barbed wire and a little label, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, also here on the um, cowboy, so that he didn't have, see how he has a lot of white on him? I colored all the white space with the um, balmy blue Stampin' Blend so he would blend in a little bit better on there. Because when I put him on there, I didn't like all that white outline. It didn't look right. So I colored it in. I thought that was pretty cool. And then I did the same thing with the cows, but I had inked this with Garden Green and realized I didn't have a Garden Green Stampin' Blend. So if you're going to color your, your grass for your cows, make sure you use that ink on your <laughs> grass first before so you can match the Stampin' Blend because mine doesn't match. But anyway, there it goes. There you go. And cute little clouds. So that's one. And then this is the one that was on my blog yesterday. This is more of a feminine touch here in Texas. You'll see this kind of stuff around weddings, horseshoes and flowers and lace tablecloths. Um, so I, you probably can't really see it, but I embossed the horseshoe on the background. I embossed these horseshoes in silver embossing powder on silver foil. These are the Bloom and Grow flowers. And I actually did this and it was too short so I did another one and added another flower in there I cut it off and tucked it in there and then this is the lace dye what's it called oh so I don't know it's I have it linked there on yesterday's blog post but that is a really pretty dye all right and then you might not have seen this one back in March when I was um on spring break I posted this one and this is kind of follows that same pattern that we did today with the sunset card. I used the long stitched rectangle, not from the stitched rectangle dies, but from the ornate layers dies. I love that die. And I embossed here in silver, and then I used a uh, retired color, I believe it was copper, right there on cinnamon cider. And I colored the pearls with a cinnamon cider dab and blend. So now I hope I have convinced you that you need the set because it is so fun. Lots and lots of options. Oh no, look at that. I'm gonna have to fix that. Lots and lots of options. If you would like for me to send you the make and takes for this card, for this card, and for this, just make sure your order is in by Monday at midnight. You will need the inks, 
um, these, I'm sorry, the stamps. I cannot stamp anything for you. So you need the stamps, you need the ink, um, you need the dies, just these dies, everything else I will cut out for you. Um, and you'll, you'll need an embossing folder, whatever embossing folder you wanna use. Okay, so make sure those orders are in by Monday at midnight. I will post this one on Monday so you can see closer pictures of it um, on Monday's blog post. All right, you guys, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. Debbie, they are orderable, but they are on back order. Um, you can, they were turned off a little while this week, um, but you can definitely order them as of two hours ago. Hopefully they're still on. You guys, thanks so much. I will see you next week, Thursday, two o'clock, okay? Not Friday, it'll be Facebook Thursday next week. Have a great weekend, you guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.